Stumps and Stories podcast with Nishat Bhai Vaidya. Hello and welcome to another episode of Stumps and Stories. If you're joining us on Spotify, then please do subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Apple Podcasts as well. This journey continues as we discover different stories from the world of cricket. And I believe one of the most fascinating stories is of the Nepal cricket team. And joining me today is someone who I've known for quite a while and he has been a part of this Nepalese cricket journey for more than a year now and has been a big factor in their success. Now, before I move ahead, let me introduce to you Mrugang, a.k.a. Monty Desai. And we all call him Monty. And I'm possibly one of the few people who gets his first name right. But let's stick to Monty for this interview. Now, this journey itself of Monty Desai is so fascinating because here's a man who loves cricket, like right from here, like all of us. But his love for the game is, I think, a fuel, a fuel for his passion. And he's taken that passion to the higher levels of cricket. I've seen him coach everyone. I've seen him coach an IPL Tyro. I've seen him coach club cricketers. I've seen him coach international cricketers. And he gives his 100%. I've seen him in the IPL teams. I've seen him at the Tamil Nadu Premier League, where our association just got stronger. And it was obviously the mutual love of the game that got us together, but also a shared insight of life. Because I think this man not just lives and breathes the game, but he also learns his lessons and tries to teach us all. When I started my IPL journey as a young man, he was one of the few who looked out for me and inspired me to continue and gave me a lot of motivation. He then moved on to work with the West Indies cricket team and has been the head coach of the Nepal cricket team for over a year and has a list of achievements. The biggest, I think, is obviously qualifying for the T20 World Cup. But above all, when when they had their backs to the wall, he took over. When they needed 11 victories out of 12, he was one of the big factors who helped them achieve that goal. So without further ado, I'm going to let Monty in on this conversation. Monty, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks, Disha. Then uh, it was uh, plenty of kind words. You just lifted me up to a different level. And it was, uh, I mean, our association goes a long way. Right from Gujarat Lions, if I'm not uh, forgetting it. And yes, we had some wonderful time in Tamil Nadu Premier League. Here we are. I'm also admiring the work which you're putting in on all this podcast. So, well done to you as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Gujarat Lions was where we started off. And what struck me at the time was, obviously, I ha- I was someone who had dreamed of playing the game at the highest level. All of us do. We never got there. I took on a different path, you know, got into media, got into my podcast hosting, commentary, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. You followed your dream and went into coaching. Can you reflect on that journey, getting into coaching, moving from one level to the other, your experiences, how difficult was it? And how did you manage to carve out your own niche, should I say? I mean, if we try to call it difficult in terms of uh, opportunities at the highest level, probably I'm a little more realistic and practical about it that those opportunities come along the way, right? When you start doing some work with the uh, a lot more established coaches around you. And that way, I've been lucky and fortunate because uh, very early I got those exposures through Rajasthan Royals and then obviously uh, shared a lot of different dressing rooms. Uh, coaching for me, you know, I don't uh, define coaching with the audiences which is in front of me. I think coaching for me is anyone who I can make a difference to. You know, it could be an individual player, it could be, like you mentioned earlier, it could be a, a grassroots cricketer or a professional at the highest level. Once I'm on the ground, I think. Uh, what I can reflect very clearly is that uh, I engage fully because I love this game. And when I see that there is a bit of progress with that individual or a team, uh, I enjoy that journey. I enjoy that uh, process which you put in place. And uh, yes, when you get uh, satisfactory results, obviously you get motivated even more. So you start thinking a little more, you start planning a little more. So coaching for me is an ongoing journey throughout. Uh, I think uh, through coaching, I also try to look out for building stories. You know, uh, Nepal is one of those stories which I'm really proud of so far. You said one year, but I count my days, you know, so I know for the fact that uh, right from 19th January when I agreed to work with them and 28th of Jan, when I landed into Kathmandu with a few of those uh, headlines at that point, which I was I was not expecting, like 
you know, I, I came across some headlines of fixing in Nepal Premier League and things like that. And then obviously the challenges that they were facing. But the challenges also motivates me. I think uh, more than me, uh, the biggest excitement for me was the kind of hunger which all the players showed you know, when I interacted. With them. Absolutely. And, you know, when you look back, you've been at the TNPL where uh, you say you coach players, you coach personalities, you know, if you can help them, not just from a cricketing perspective. Now, here you were in Tamil Nadu where obviously, you know, there's a language barrier because some of them wouldn't speak English or some of the other languages. And you had a very successful time with your then franchise. And then obviously you moved to West Indies where, again, the culture is very different. They approach their cricket very differently. You've come in from the hard-nosed Mumbai setup moved into the IPL where there's a lot at stake. Success is that uh, success is what counts. How did you make that transition right through? This one, uh, I think, you know, in many ways, one that obviously you look forward to such opportunities. Dinesh Karthik, who I came across in Gujarat Lions, uh, did suggest me and brought me over in Tamil Nadu Premier League. So again, uh, when you come across some good people uh, around your profession, it also puts you in different places. And uh, you ignite your passion over there as well. So, but the thing was that I think uh, once I went to Tamil Nadu, I, what I enjoyed was the cultural difference, the language barrier, like you said. And the more such kind of op opportunities came across to me, I was excited to dive into those roles. Like, for example, Afghanistan, then you said West Indies. For me, this is like a, a great opportunity to have, a, uh, you know, a graduation. You know, uh, like <laughs> anyone who will go to do some ex specific or uh, what you call specialist work in their careers, this is one of those things, you know, like you graduate and then you post-graduate and you keep learning. So for me to enter into different dressing rooms and different culture uh, was more of like getting richer with experiences. So I've enjoyed every bit of it so far. And uh, I think uh, West Indies was a very different experience for me and totally uh, into a, a new region out there. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the uh, Beautiful, uh, what do you call the musical culture over there alongside the uh, hard work which you put in on the ground. Uh, definitely the red ball side of uh, West Indies test cricket is something which I had never experienced before with any team. Uh, that remains very close to my heart. Yes, we wanted a lot more better results in white ball cricket, which didn't happen. Uh, but that's also part of the learning curve. When you go back to Tamil Nadu Premier League, one, one or two very distinct memories with me is that travel in the buses where they'll play those Tamil Nadu with the Tamil films and I would sit around and just watch that and laugh <laughs> at not understanding enough uh, but yes on the ground uh, with cricket we had a lot more good results I think a lot of players participated over there very well when we created workshops you know, where not just the players the owners of the franchise also the support staff and the management and as we speak I also I remember fondly one of my Hello, coach, Kokuli Krishnan, who's not there anymore. Very unfortunate to hear the story this year. You know that, get to get that sad news this year. But uh, Maddie, myself, and Jake, sir, we had uh, come together and created a great environment uh, in Kuti Patriots for the first two years. And I'm sure, you know, till today, we feel proud about it. Jake's might be feeling proud up there, you know, uh, the kind of uh, environment that we created and the results that we got over there. And yes, the last part of that was uh, like our working with, again, both my and Jigs together. Uh, so far on this coaching journey, a lot of uh, satisfying memories. And one of those memories is, of course, when you were a part of the dressing room, when West Indies chased down over 400 and Kyle Mayers got that double 100 on the final day, Bangladesh, test debut, turning track. Tell me about it because... 400 in the final innings, never easy. It's only been done a few times in test cricket. And here's this guy who's a debutant and he gets a double. The most satisfying part of that uh, uh, tour to Bangladesh was that we had uh, quite a few players who were on debut. You know, We didn't have the full main squad for that series against Bangladesh. We were players that pulled out because of the COVID situation and you know, uh, a little more personal time which some of the players wanted after we lost badly against New Zealand in New Zealand. Uh, mm -hmm. So, with some of these young players who were brought in, the kind of preparation that we went through, that was very satisfying. Uh, the number of weeks which we spent in 
Bangladesh in close camp. Uh, and again, the hunger part. I will keep on pointing out the hunger part with any new player who comes into a setup. When you look forward to earning that cap, representing the country, you want to put the best foot forward. I thought uh, that camp and the work that we put in, specifically in that Kyle Myers was going every single day with a small piece of his batting to get in place. That innings for me, it was a great example of batsmanship. Uh, he, he pulled in, pulled in nicely with the other players, got into reasonable partnerships. But when it required, you know, to step up afterwards, you could see the ball so well. It struck some, it struck some big blows at that point, and uh, that innings will is a very memorable innings. I think Kyle Myers also must be thinking about you know, how he puts that same display again. Uh, because he's on his career out there where, you know, it's not the same anymore. A lot of other teams also must be you know, working out his uh, style of play. But uh, that was very satisfying innings to look from the dressing room. And a great series to win against Bangladesh. You spoke about hunger and that's a word that really describes or it's one of the big factors for success. And you mentioned another date earlier, January 19th and then 28th you head into Nepal. They are obviously going through a difficult time. You mentioned some headlines being there, plus the fact that in the World Cup Super League, point uh, Super League 2, I think, yes, you had to get a certain number of wins, 11 wins out of the next possible 12 games so that you could go to the World Cup qualifiers. How difficult was that? What were your thoughts on landing in? And if anything, you won 11 games. And I was reading a quote somewhere which said that Almost each game could be a Netflix series on its own. I think I read that on Cricket Post. So, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so for me, that whole that whole event for me is like walking into the unknowns. I was just not sure, you know, how we'll pull this together. But at the same time, uh, for me, once the can management gave me the confidence that they're not trying to judge me on these performances. But at the same time, I knew the desperation of holding on to the ODI status. It eased out a little bit for me because uh, I think uh, I I took up that job not just for this 12 game that we were into that ODI cycle where whatever fate we come across. But it was more about uh, ensuring that they connect with my vision where we start building this nation as a cricket nation. Uh, you talked about Netflix series. Yes, I think, you know, uh, what I can say is that Seven or eight players from that this from this team that we are building right now, it's becoming a core group. So part of the under-19 team a couple of years ago when I was also involved as a batting coach. And we were in the Asia Cup at that time. So for me, uh, striking a relationship with them was a little more easy because they understood my working style. And uh, again, over there, we encouraged everyone, including the management, to participate in a workshop to just see how the champion team looks like around the world. You know, and what are the kind of ingredients a champion champion team possesses, and can we bring some of those qualities by working towards it? So I think week by week, that Netflix series did unfold in reality out there. You know, where you could see a behavioral change first in an individual, then in the whole group, where we started blocking the negativity from outside. Then the behavioral changes came into. Uh, some physical actions where we sweat it very specifically for, you know, getting some of the skill execution in place, like hitting some areas where I got a little more confidence of their skill. And then, you know, for me, it was just about uh, highlighting that to them and showing them their own potential. That if you are able to do this right now in the scenario trainings, I believe, you should be that you can execute the same skills under pressure against a bowler who is executing that skill let's say a batsman, or for a bowler to challenge the batsman of the opposite. And same goes with the complementing of your the fielding group. I think one of the two things which we took a lot of pride throughout the year is putting an effort in our fielding you know, and making sure that our fielding becomes our weapon. So in the 12 games also, we ended up uh, having a strike rate of one and a half as a run out apart from the bowlers picking up wickets. You know, so that was very satisfying and encouraging. Uh, I can say the very first episode for me was a player like Kushal Bhurtal who from the close camp decided to go out and messaged me one early morning that because of the situation with his mom, she went 
you know, she came across a freaky accident, something which has been written about. But I'm saying it again because for me, that was a telling point, you know, where a player gets affected emotionally because of someone who's so close, mother, you know, getting into a freaky accident and there's a lot of burn on her body. She was uh, brought in on emergency from her province into the hospital in Kathmandu, which was over the night, you know, six, seven hours of drive over the night. And uh, uh, you know, he was completely distracted. He was not there anymore. And we had to leave him for a couple of days. Uh, but when I visited his mother, his younger sister, I came across and uh, in front of me, actually, she was encouraging Kushal Bhutal to get back to the camp and focus on the game. And she said that, I will take care of mom. You don't worry about it. And I think now we should focus on what is more important for you and for the nation. Along with uh, his father, of course, who was also there. For me, that was a telling point. You know, uh, he stayed away, blocked himself from that, from that day, and he took that as a, you know, pledge. And in the very first game, he comes, and that is the time we are chasing a big score against Navi. We are two eighty-eight or something, and they have never crossed two thirty in the last two years. He ended up scoring a hundred. You know, so for me, uh, you know, it all started there. So you, know, you can say that's the first episode of Netflix series. And then you had a player like Arif who was not well and you were, you were not able to pick him. Arif Sheikh, you were not able to pick him in the squad. He was sitting outside and watching the first four games unfold in front of his eyes. Uh, and in the next series, when we go to UAE, we bring him back to the squad. He starts chipping in. You know, Stories after story. Beam Sharkey was never part of the team for the crew for the first two years of the ODI cycle. And then this year, we gave him a breakthrough. And he then becomes uh, the pillar. You know, someone who scores run very consistently in ODIs. That made a difference. And then, of course, uh, some of the youngsters who we roped in, players like Gulshan Jha, uh, Kushal Malla, captain himself, Rohit Podal, Sandeep Lamichami, you know, the, the kind of situation that he was going through in his personal life, he is still going through it. I mean, I cannot talk about the challenges which he is facing, but you know, we all follow the law. And, uh, so far, he has also handled himself so well. So, I think players were able to shut all the external noise and one game after the other, we started believing in the happy dressing room philosophy a lot more. And we scripted something special. Obviously, we are still riding on it. We don't want to just keep on talking about those 11 games. Good thing is that after that, we were able to put an effort and we have qualified for the 2024 E20 World Cup. So, that is something which we are looking for. But, you know, now I'm going to use a national symbol of Nepal called the Everest. And those 11 victories looked like an Everest. You know, you had to climb it step by step. At some stage, it is easy to look at the peak and get distracted and say, you know, we are so far away. Or maybe we are halfway there. We, you know, halfway across and we'll get there. So how difficult was it to focus on, say, the next game and the next and the next? Because I, I bring it in context of the one ball battle theory that you have sort of inculcated there. So can you tell me a little bit about maintaining focus on the present, especially when you're climbing an Everest? Yeah, so I mean, uh, one ball battle, the one ball theory is something uh, I have believed in any every dressing that I've walked in. And I think uh, more importantly, the ball, which is, is an event on itself, the space between two deliveries is where either a bowler brings in his mindset or the batsman who brings in his mindset matters a lot. You know, uh, and if you have a plan in place and if you're consistent with your plan, what you do is you take every single ball backing your plan and you go deep into that game. You know? uh, and uh, th that is something which we kind of coached all the players. It's a group together. My coaching team, I would also give them a lot of credit in this. And the players embraced it also very well. And I think uh, we were also very vocal in the dressing room. You will only see coaches more vocal in football games. Luckily, over here, uh, there was not many cameras around and uh, we could go back to the club cricket environment, I can say that. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, we were not abusive. We were very constructive. And the encouraging words from even my assistant coach, Pasanji, who is very loud the way he cheers, he used to say, ek ek ball. You know, and in Nepali language, he used to tell them, khele rakhyo. Uh, it became 
it became a message in itself and where every player was able to bring themselves back in those challenges and yes you said like climbing mount mount everest but uh, one of the blessing which we came across was in the second four sa game cycle in uae we lost the first match against uae uh, and uh, that time i could see the kind of body language we came across you know and we were able to address that very quickly i think players also understood when they were able to compare the body language and the attitude which they had towards the challenges which they faced in the first four games against scotland and namibia and one more game that we won against png in uae and what we did differently in the game against uae sorry in in P- against png we did well but against uae we were not up to the mark and it took us a day to you know reflect that again we were able to address we were able to show them some videos we were able to discuss the plans which we had uh, brought it together as part of our game plan including the behavioral messages which i said in a workshop we came across certain messages which players shared it that what we did well and what we can do better so we embraced it again you know our blueprint we embraced it again then it was a matter of time because we just wanted to win one game as soon as we won against ua again in ua i think that instilled a lot of confidence in the team because once we were back in to you we were very clear that uh, we will claim this mount everest game by game it also had its own drama in the last game under fading lights against ua again <laughs> now can you tell us about that drama because it's uh, you know it's one thing to read it because yeah. i wasn't there obviously but it's another thing to hear it from someone who was very much a part of that game yeah i mean uh, that was the last game where we had to win that to qualify for the world cup qualifiers directly uh we had you already had to go for the uh, pre qualifiers in namibia but uh, we had a chance to beat uae one more time and score that two extra points and be third in the second division league and qualify directly for the world cup qualifiers uh, eventually actually we ended up knocking namibia out because of that and we had to go back to the pre qualifiers so uh the drama which unfolded was it started in the morning frankly you know where ua decided to uh, come early and get hold of the warm up areas which normally we use <laughs> and uh, a night before i had already given heads up to the players that start anticipating what else an opponent will do to disrupt your routines you know your thinking and think ahead so i remember again it was again kushal gurtal with me in the bus and he said that sir aaj kya hoega to bola chalo saath mein dekhenge wahan jaake you know aaj kya hoga and uh, something which we have started embracing and talking about it with lot of uh, you know as kind of part of a fun and enjoyment we say all the time that walk into the unknown with excitement and we keep saying that and we actually have created a great attitude towards it good mentality so you know, i enjoy that part with them so as soon as we saw that they have occupied that we both started looking at each other and we started smiling that you know this was something which we didn't expect but it is happening now so we'll embrace this too and as the game unfolded i think they played a very good uh, first half uae you know they posted a imposing score against us 310 311 um and then obviously we had to chase down with dl method and go close to we we were actually close to chasing the whole score but it came down to fading lights and dl method we were some 6 7 runs behind and then uh, as the game progressed uh, and i think fast bowlers were not allowed to bowl and spinner had to come in by then we were ahead in the dl and the time was already time had already crossed and empire decided to call it off so it had its own drama and they called it off but uh, you know uh, rain was also rain also was you know just it just started drizzling so uh, it was a bit of a distraction in one way uh, but we were again you know able to hold the calm dressing room together and gulshan jha and gulshan jha stepped up beautifully on that particular day in fact gulshan jha stepped up few times you know uh, even now when we lost the finals after qualifying for the t20 world cup 2024 gulshan jha played a brilliant innings against oman in the finals which we lost in the super over uh, i consider that one cricketer especially you know we have been able to unearth from the under 19s into the main team uh, will go a long way as an all rounder so, yes while while that game was unfolding on that day you know uh, it was very emotional for a lot of players so uh, kind of enjoyed it from the receive 
it's it's important you mentioned emotion and it brings me to my next uh, question because you know having lived in india we've seen what cricket is we are in the top tier of cricket right and having worked in the ipl we know we've got everything you know we don't have to worry about things associate level it's different you are literally playing for funds odi status different challenges the competition is a lot because even the other teams are equally motivated so when someone like you who's been in india you go there you look at it and you understand how much it means to those players right i mean almost every game is that important and that's also a challenge in itself you define passion right you define passion and i would say defining passion and defining character and if someone really wants to get deep into this two very deep words in one way in cricket you need to go and experience the associate team okay uh, in ipl i've been around for 9 years everything is on the platter so you get the best of the hotels best of the facilities extra players to come in to facilitate extra you know as many coaches you want uh, best equipments uh, so when i compare that to an associate team i can before i go to nepal i can give another example which ended up actually as a sad story when i was uh, asked to head canada in 2019 in a similar kind of a top format tournament where out of six teams four will get the odi status and two will not canada lost canada lost that odi status from getting regained by 0.04 a boundary costed them an odi status wow. they had beaten usa in that match but on net run rate they were behind png by 0.04 one boundary one boundary extra decided four years of odi status and many cricketers of cricket canada career some of them stopped playing for cricket canada because they knew that now they will not get any contract basic contract money they don't get handsome amount of salaries but certain amount of money which they can you know look forward to playing cricket so you can imagine the kind of things are at stake you know with odi status regained by nepal i think all these boys who now uh, in a joking manner they do speak about it at time that we had decided that some of them will go and take up a job in australia and do a taxi job some of them will go uh, in other country and start studying or you know just uh, give up cricket so It's, it's very different when we think about any of these things for me as a coach i think every single day i feel i'm building my character you know, uh, because of them it's you, you really feel you're contributing towards the game and for the love of the game you know very uh, substantial man where you can leave an impact not just on the cricketer but on that person where where is in his life and then through the whole nation the way it's following right now i think we have a wonderful opportunity in nepal to leave an impact to this whole nation where it is brought when the cricket has brought some joy into that country and you know that determination and that willingness to learn could be seen and i'll tell you where i sort of noticed it is you know on digital two sports we were doing the commentary for the world cup qualifiers and in matches that nepal was not involved i could see you and a few players you know watching it from the stands you know being there just trying to learn what's happening i think that was that was quite something yeah because you know again the exposure right uh, this is the first year where nepal has played many tournaments because they kept on qualifying when we qualified for the asia cup we got to play emerging cup as a part of the build up for the asia cup uh, as we qualified for the world cup qualifiers we ended up playing against the test nation like zimbabwe west indies and ireland i uh, became close to beating ireland in that uh, one out game which we got you know it was more for rankings after we could not reach the super 6 and now again with t20 world cup qualifier we have the, we have qualified We're again hoping that you know we'll rub shoulders against one or two full member nations which is not uh, something which you get it easily and there are no bilaterals where you know teams are willing to invite nepal and play but i hope that this year's performance is make some of this full member nations you know think about it. it's all about world cricket in my mind we see a lot of interesting a uh, good bilateral series uh, against like competitive sides like england australia india south africa you know sometimes the, the derby game which talk about against india and pakistan things like that 
perfect time. You know, a lot more these nations who are playing the game, you know, working very hard, they deserve to be seen a lot more. Hopefully, at least the neighboring countries, if nothing else, at least Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, we can start getting bilateral series against them. It will make a lot of difference. One, to the to Nepal itself, it's part of their growth and development, but also for the world cricket. You'll have a, one more exciting nation to look for. Uh, they are very athletic, they're very hardworking. And uh, in the Asia Cup, again, people have seen that you know, they can put up a show. 100%. And, you know, at uh, Digital 2 Sports, we were also commentating on the Asia Cup and the amount of messages that we were getting from our Nepalese viewers and the kind of love that, you know, Nepal cricket team has. And they also lived up to it, I would say, because there were some gutsy performances against Pakistan and India. But how do you approach that? Because... Here's a Nepal team that's stepping onto a bigger stage for the first time. It's very easy to look at, oh, there's Baba Razan, you know, oh, there's Shain Shah Pridi, there's Virat Kohli, there's Rohit Sharma. You can get distracted. Some of the players may have looked up to these guys. So how do you maintain focus? And against India especially, some of them did really well. The openers gave a very good start. The batting was gutsy. The fielding also showed a lot of character. How do you maintain that focus? Uh, before getting into the Asia Cup, you mean? Yes, getting into the Asia Cup and during those matches. Yeah, so it was difficult, frankly. You know, I mean, I had a couple of conversations with them where I could see, you know, through the conversation where they had an excitement to face them. Uh, but I would say when they played against West Indies and having never faced West Indies players, they have only watched them in television. I think we were able to address that message right there. You know, one thing is to get excited to see you know, your own idols on the television and then you know, face them out there and you know, get carried away. But the other thing is that what about your own identity? You know, uh, and I think we have come together and we have agreed that you know we are fierce competitors and we want to earn that respect with every team that we play. So when it came to Asia Cup, we were very determined that we would put up a show. So and we knew that, you know, we cannot have, we will not be able to stay there, will even impact on complete 100 overs. But we'll go phase by phase. So, when we planned well against uh, Pakistan, the first 35 overs, we really competed. We picked up uh, brilliant wickets with uh, good bowling plans that we had put in place and then well executed by our bowlers and then one or two brilliant runouts. And we put the, we kept on putting pressure on them till 35th over. And then obviously, like you said, barbarisms, experience, Ipchaka's experience, all those experiences counts. So, uh, we were not able to finish it well. And uh, then the batting display was not great there. But the best part about the Asia Cup progress for me was everything that we came across as part of our experience against Pakistan, we again came together. We reflected in areas that we could have done better. We had some healthy conversations. In one or two training sessions which we did, we did it with specific motive. Uh, that we wanted to now show how good we are with batting as well. So when it came, uh, you know, when we got that uh, chance against uh, India to bat, one or two lucky opportunities which we got early on. But, you know, they grabbed it handsomely. So I was very happy to see that too. And I think those are the kind of games which left a good confidence building as an exercise, I would say, you know, in, in the individuals. Because it allowed us to keep on going towards also the T20 World Cup qualifiers where we beat again UAE and finally we got qualified. So, all these small, small pieces is actually adding up to individual players' growth and their personality. 100%. And also the fans love. I mentioned the amount of messages we get during Nepal's matches. But even otherwise, you know, people love cricket in Nepal. We've seen pictures of the stadium and how jam-packed it gets when Nepal plays you know, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because here in India, we take that for granted. But this is an associate team and the kind of craze and support they get, it's immense and it's unbelievable. But it's also so heartening if you're looking at it from just being a cricket lover. Yeah, well, fans, Nepali fans for me, are on a different level. You know, if somebody has watched the games or at least the images on YouTube or any of the social media platforms, the Asia Cup qualifiers final went over two days. Um, the rain interrupted the game and we had to continue the game second day. It was for us like a test match experience. But because of the rain, 
on day one, the fans stood there with umbrellas on for nearly two to three hours. There are no proper bucket seats. You know, it, these are like banks around the ground. It's a university ground with small pavilion on one side, you know, a commentary building on the other side, and you know, made up, uh, made up what do you call uh, the the uh, small tents where you know people will come and sit and watch the game. And they they just keep defining a new version of passion for me. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So, uh, with umbrellas on, they stood there for two three hours. Uh, when it came to uh, jam, oh, the, what do you call it, the capacity packed stay uh, the ground. Then the fans stood up on the they they climbed the trees. And now the qualifiers when we played in Mulpani, they were on the roofs of all the buildings around. So. <laughs> It was very, very interesting for me. <laughs> Every little opportunity which they get, and it takes you back to the 80s and 90s, if you remember our time, you know, when people get into the ground and watch the game from different angles or different corners. We would do that. But that is something which we see now in, in Nepal. They love this game. They love this game. And I think, you know, there is a lot of, there is a sense of innocence uh, in uh, the Nepali citizens you know, who come and watch the game. I interact with some of the youngsters, you know, later on after the game, and I ask them what else. Do. But uh, they're so much emerged from you know, that that day. And they're actually a definition of also being in present, you know, where they enjoy every moment and they just hold on to that moment and feel proud about the fact that how well the Nepali team is playing, and they they thank about the fact that now the whole world is watching Nepal through this game. You feel a sense of accomplishment and feel proud for the fact that you have contributed towards something good. Uh, good and great things uh, attracts me. Uh, you learn from it. I think those good and great things, I've seen it in Nepal. Now. I hope that you know this story keeps on getting bigger and bigger every year. Absolutely. And it is getting bigger because now you're heading to the T20 World Cup in the US and the West Indies. Nepal have played a T20 World Cup earlier in 2014. But now ICC is looking at the T20 World Cup in a different way. Next year's T20 World Cup is going to be the biggest. It's also going to America, potentially opening up another market for the sport. Overall, it's very good for the sport. For Nepal, how big is this achievement of making it through to the T20 World Cup? And... How are the fans and the players looking forward to it? It's huge because you know after after a gap of ten years, you have again qualified for the World Cup. See, look, this year for fifty hours we went to World Cup qualifiers, something which uh, they have done it before. They have been in the World Cup qualifiers in two thousand eighteen as well, and before that, two thousand fourteen is where they played the actual T Twenty World. Cup. So now again in this one T Twenty format to be part of the World Cup, twenty teams will represent the World Cup. Obviously, uh, it has a lot of significance in our happy dressing room, the team, and all the individuals will be part of the history now. And also for the Nepali fans, and you know, I think also the Nepalis who probably have now moved and live, are living in America, so they will also be looking for it. I'm mean, hearing that uh, quite a few Nepalis are you know, settled in states, in different parts of states. So, and for me also, there is the huge amount of importance to this year because uh, I moved to America last year. With my green card, you know, and uh, I took uh, some, I took some difficult decisions. Frankly, you know, I was offered a job to uh, head the uh, US team as well, right? just for my personal family reasons as well. And now, especially the, I, I take this as part of my responsibility. Where you know, uh, Nepal has given me a lot of love. You know, they have trusted me a lot. And for me, uh, this heading into the World Cup next year uh, is. I, mean, I cannot express it properly in emotions that what it means, but you know, I really want them to do it. And we all do. We all do want them to know well. But how do you look at the road ahead for Nepal? A lot of achievements, a lot of positives. You feel a sense of responsibility, and the players also feel a sense of responsibility. You told us a few of their stories. It shows what it means for them to play for the country. There's a lot of passion. There are results now. What's the road ahead like? You know, what are the visions? Do you set goals or do you just focus on improving every day? No, we definitely set goals and we also try to put some plans in place. I think uh, the roadblocks for us to 
have a smooth transition is the budgets. So, uh, and I'm hoping that I'm also creating a presentation right now as we speak. And, and I'm hoping that when I go back to Nepal next week and I meet the the sports council representatives who have asked me to come across and present certain things, along with Cricket Association of Nepal, where we'll get certain fundings from ICC for the coming years. Uh, we, you know, we want some support. Uh, I mean, I've been vocal about the fact, not as an excuse, okay, but uh, you know, I've been vocal about the fact that a lot of these achievements is from the self-management of these cricketers. These young cricketers have self-managed certain things and with limited uh, resources, we have been able to maximize and get to where we have reached. If we get a lot more support, now, if we get some fixtures with full member nations, or let's say even state teams of uh, representing all the BCCI tournaments, uh, if we can get, we can if you can play against teams like Delhi, Mumbai, or Karnataka, who have good T20 teams, Tamil Nadu, that will also help. We were able to get some budgets in before getting to the World Cup qualifiers where we went to Nagpur and we were uh, we got a two weeks of fantastic experience out there in Royals, a high performance center. Uh, with they are also basically brought in a team, you know, where few of the prospects of Rajasthan Royals played against our team. Uh, it was a great experience because you know, they were. You, our players could see the difference and it helped because the, the, the highly competitive game, we lost the series against the Royals Academy, but uh, we learned something out of it. Even that helped us to march towards the uh, World Cup qualifier, which we did. We finally qualified. So we want those kind of exposures now. Six months in hand, December to June is six months. Fourth June is when the World Cup starts. I really want to make this six months count for this one particular format, with this 15 core players and few more prospects we will look into in the next few weeks and few months and put up a good team, support and budget, hopefully really make a difference, leave an impact in the World Cup so that they can build their career. At the moment, I don't think Nepali players also looked for any T10 leagues or any private T20 leagues. Very rarely one or two players gets a Opportunity. Canada Global T20 is where Dipendra Eri and Sandeep Lamichani was roped in recently. And Sandeep is somebody who has moved around globally before, you know, where he played a lot of Big Bash, other leagues, CPL. But I know for the fact that there are at least four or five players who can definitely walk into some of these small domestic leagues around. Even that happens before the World Cup, it will help because they will get a lot more exposure, they'll come back more confident. And our core group will, uh, you know, together march forward. Yes, and, you know, it's so fascinating, this whole chat. And it's really been very enlightening for me. So, Monty, thank you so much for doing this. We do wish Nepal the very best. We get a lot of messages, a lot of love from Nepali cricket fans. You can see the passion. And today, I've gotten a glimpse of the passion that the coach has, which I know you always had. But... You know, the way you have articulated it, the way you told your players' stories, we wish nothing but the best for Nepal and we hope to see Nepal team grow. Yeah, thanks, Nishat, to bring me over for this conversation. I think uh, there are a lot of stories which are untold so far. You know, I can talk about each and every player and their name, but uh, there is always a limited time to talk about certain things. <laughs> uh, but like you said, that I hope that, you know, I've made a justification to whatever questions you across to me and I hope that I was able to at least share some part of the stories which I feel Nepali deserves to be, you know, their story deserves to be told in the world, especially in the cricket world. No, no, absolutely. And this is what this podcast is about. We call ourselves Stumps and Stories so that all these stories can come out. So to all our listeners, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you've had a great time listening to this chat. And please do show your support to Nepal and all the other cricket teams who are only out there making our game much more beautiful. So also what you can do is join our podcast on Apple and of course, on Spotify. Other than that, do connect with us on social media platforms. On Instagram, you can join us on Digital 2 Sports Pod 1. And personally, you can follow me on Nishad Paivaidya on YouTube. Please do join Digital 2 Sports.